In this video, I'm going to show you how to deal with the next button problem in the drag and drop widget. I'm Paul Wilson and I make videos about e-learning, specifically the authoring tool Adobe Captivate. If you like what I'm doing here today, please subscribe to my channel, like this video, and by all means, share this video with your e-learning buddies. I got a message from one of the viewers of my YouTube channel and they were concerned about how the next button works with the drag and drop widget. I hadn't really considered this before, but I'm beginning to realize what the problem is. And I'll share that with you today. And I think I've got a solution that should work not only for this viewer, but anyone else who runs into this situation. Let me show you. Okay, so I have a drag and drop here set up pretty straightforward. Um, let's make sure I've configured the answer. Yeah, it looks good there. I've got a next button, which will take you to the next slide. On this blank slide, let me just throw up a simple back button, which I will use just for testing purposes here. And its action will be to go to the previous slide, done. Okay, so let's preview this couple of problems. Okay, so here's our preview here. Now the first problem is simply this, is that there's a next button and I can simply skip that interaction if I so choose. And we obviously want to encourage our students, our learners to complete these learning interactions because how else are they gonna learn, right? So the one solution you might think of is, well, I'll just get rid of a next button because of course the way this interaction works is much like a final quiz question. Let me show you. So if I select this interaction here and we decide to turn off the next button, it will still work, right? We'll still get this, but let me show you the other problem that potentially can happen. So great, no problem. We, ha we cannot skip this content. We have to complete this uh, learning interaction and hit submit. Oh, I got it wrong. Let's try that again. Confidence, voice, audience, visual aids, submit. Perfect, okay, correct. Click anywhere or press Y to continue. I click anywhere, I go to the next slide. But let's say I'm like most learners who might wanna go back and review what they've learned before. So they press the back button, they come back to the drag and drop slide, and as you can see, there is no next button and the opportunity to click anywhere or press Y, that's gone, right? So that's not gonna work for most people there. And uh, you know, it really doesn't matter whether you've got this as part of your quiz or whether you're using it like a knowledge check, which is what I'm doing here. So here's my solution, here's my workaround. Ideally, uh, if Adobe's listening, maybe a better solution could be found by modifying the drag and drop widget so that maybe the next button can be hidden until the interaction is completed, much like the other widgets, by the way. So I don't think it's that far of a stretch, but let's do this. Let's add an interactive component, specifically a button block, but I'm gonna drag this up to the top here if it lets me, and there we go. <laughs> And uh, I'm going to put two buttons on the slide. Let's go back to the original interaction. Let's get rid of that previous button. And for here, I'm going to distribute these roughly evenly across the slide here. And we'll make this into a back button. And we'll make this into a next button. Okay, and just to be the kind of person that I am, let's uh, copy the appearance and uh, apply the appearance there. You get two tutorials for the price of one here. All right, so to make this do what I think the end user wants to do here, I'm gonna select the next button. Uh, let's make sure it is set up to go to next slide. And the back button would be similar. It would be go to the previous slide, but I don't have one yet, so that's okay. But I'm gonna select this next button and I'm going to make it not visible in output or initially uh, hidden during publish. So when we first arrive on the slide, we'll see the back button up here. We'll have our reset and submit down below. One big problem is again, you can't resize this. That's why I'm putting these at the top there so they become 
uh, really easy to recognize. Now, let's go to our interaction itself. And on success, we are gonna go to the next slide, but we're gonna do one more thing. We are going to show that custom next button that previously was hidden, and we'll click on done. And we'll do the same thing for last attempt as well. We will show our next button, if, even if we've run out of tries there. So let's try this out and see how this works. All right, here we go. Um, I can't skip forward because there's no next button yet, but let's finish our interaction. So we'll use uh, visual aids here, attentive audience, voice manipulation, conveying confidence. We have to scroll down a little bit to find our submit button. That's why it's not really the best solution. Hit submit, click anywhere or press Y to continue. But if I do go back, hey, guess what? I have a next button and a back button. So I can navigate either in reverse order or hit next to continue with the rest of the project. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.